Are you ready to improve your starter base and never die to a door camper at the same time? We all know the 2 by one A standard base with an airlock, never enough storage, and if you're good, you slept in a furnace and a workbench. What if I were to show you something that looked just like a 2 by one Something that had that same poor solo player vibe. A base that most raiders just wouldn't bother with. I'm going to show you how to take that 2x1 and slap in 3 furnaces, 8 large boxes, and everything else you could possibly need to get your wipe rolling. Make sure you stick through to the end of the video because even if you're a more experienced player, you might learn something here. In order to make this base look like just the 2x1, we're going to first place our foundation fairly low to the ground but not so low that it clips in, and not so low that we wouldn't be able to expand if we wanted to. Beside that, we're going to place a raised foundation and surround the lower foundation with half walls. Jumping up here, we're going to place our door frame and a double door frame to the right. At this point, you can surround everything else with walls and throw a roof on it if you don't want the natural lighting. Once that's done, go ahead and slap your door down with it facing outward as that's just going to save us picking it up later and upgrade everything to stone. The initial cost for this 2x1 of the base is on the screen right now. That's including your TC, your two doors, and your key logs. While you could live in just this 1x1 area with just this foundation here, you would lose your airlock and that would be fairly dangerous as someone could go deep on you and I doubt you have all your boxes locked. Speaking of airlock, in order to make that work, we place our double door with it opening inward like this. This means that when we open this door with that one open, we're safe. A door camper would not be able to jump through and wouldn't be able to get into the core of our base. This does mean, however, they would be able to loot anything in this immediate area, so don't keep anything valuable here. Coming in here to place our TC, we're going to start with a floor triangle right here, upgrade that to stone, and place our TC by first lining it up against this crack to make sure it's straight, and then simply pushing back. I then like to move all the way to the left, and simply make sure it's flush against the wall. It's a good habit to have in any base as it's going to help you maximize space, but it doesn't matter too too much for this build. However, the TC does like to snap into place here, it's almost as if it was meant to be there. Once you've acquired enough to make your first box, we're going to place that by just lining it up against this wall here. Using the ghost mode of it going red, we're going to make sure it comes out straight, and then just pull forward and push back. This will place it nice and flush against the wall for us. Then down here, we're going to place our temporary furnaces. These are just going to sit right here for now, as this is the safest room in the base, with door campers not being able to loot here. This is going to allow us some space to cook up our metal in order to get doors and more boxes. Once you're ready to get your true airlock down, we're going to come out here and place a low triangle. Next, we place half walls on both sides, and a door frame here, and a wall here. Upgrade all of this to stone, and slap another door down if you have it. However, this door opening outward is going to act as an airlock here. Functioning just the same way this one did over there, we now have two access points to help prevent nobody from going deep on us. Once you're ready to utilize the space in here and you have your third furnace, we can go ahead and pick up these two. Coming back out here, we're actually going to throw our furnaces in our airlock. While that sounds like a bad idea, I'm going to tell you in a minute why it really isn't. Placing them flush against the corner, as long as you push away from yourself as, as far as possible, you'll get nice placement and you shouldn't have any issues placing all three. After a short bit of farming, you're going to be ready to place more boxes. To do that, we're going to come to this little underground cubby area and start off with this box here. To place this box, we're going to first line it up against the wall using that same ghost method. And then as soon as we get that little bit of pullback, Simply make sure you slowly push all the way to the left. If it's not moving, you might have pushed a little too far into the wall, and repeat the process until you get a bit more give. Once you get that nice placement flush against the wall, you should be able to place this box right here. Placing this one, again, we just go through the wall a bit to make sure we're straight, and as soon as we get that blue touch, we're good to go. Coming over here, we do the same thing. If you're exactly against the wall, it won't place, so you do have to move slightly away as you place it. Then jumping up here, we're going to go on this triangle and place our last box. If you've placed them all correctly, it should snap in fairly easily with just a little bit of wiggling around. 
There we go. While we're not quite at the eight box storage capacity yet, we're almost there. Next, we're gonna place our research bench in this forward area. This is gonna be our research and crafting area. Not a huge deal if someone goes deep on us and gets to here, but we are gonna keep a little bit of loot here. First, place your research bench and then your double box here, as placing them after is gonna be a bit of a pain and you'll have to pick up the workbench. Next, you're gonna place your level one and then eventually your level two workbench right here, and you can slap a small box under that. I recommend slapping a campfire or a barbecue in this corner here, which you can either use as storage space or for your much needed cooking. It's at this point, you're probably ready to slap a couple more boxes down. It could never hurt to have some more storage and organization space. However, we don't wanna lose our ability to loot these boxes and move around easily in the base. To pull that off, we're going to create a temporary shelf. By moving outside and around to the back of the base, we can then place a triangle off of this half wall. Now the reason we didn't just use a half wall for that back wall is half walls actually have the same upkeep cost as a full wall and it wouldn't be worth doing. Once you get this, you can actually glitch through and place your last triangle inside and then remove these as soon as possible. We don't want players to know that we just built a shelf in there, as in Rust, information is key, and we don't want to give away the value of our base. Next, you're going to have some people say just upgrade this to wood. However, upgrading it to stone is going to allow for much easier box placement, and it's just a lot less of a hassle. So while wood would cost you less overall, it's not worth it in my opinion. By upgrading this to stone, this is going to clip very nicely in the middle and we're just going to want to make sure it is centered. If you're using a crosshair, that is very easy. And then just place it as far back as possible. If you've done that correctly, you can then place a box here. And there we go. We've already slapped in two. Now from this point, you can slap in a couple more boxes just right here, but I just usually do the one small box here as it fits in nicely without interfering. You can of course do that from down below, and if you're having issues, placing this shelf is going to give you something to stand on while you're placing the boxes. With that all placed, we can now just come down here and we can easily access these boxes up here. As well as this box, and of course the boxes down below. Now of course, I promised you no more door camping. Nobody likes to die to a door camper. It's a pain in the arse, and well, it can cost you a lot, especially in a base where you have furnaces in your airlock. For the longest time, it was really only campfires that gave players comfort in game, but recently the devs made it so that furnaces give us comfort too. It makes sense, right? They admit warmth. However, there's a nice thing with this comfort. If there's only one player around, you'll get 50% comfort. However, if there's a second player, that comfort will begin to rise faster and go all the way up to 100. That means if you're getting door camp, you'll see your comfort rise much more quickly than normal, and it'll go above 50. This tells you to put away your tools, grab your gun, and do something about it, or hide inside. But at least you know someone's there, and knowing is half the battle. 